This is about to be the best RDL execution video you have ever seen. I have given feedback on this exercise thousands of times, and I'm excited to share with you guys exactly how to perform this exercise properly. Coach Alex and Coach Sue here with Physique Development, and no matter what you're utilizing for your RDL, whether that be a barbell, a dumbbell, or the trap bar as we're showing today, these cues will apply. We will want to get started with our foundation and bracing when getting set up for this exercise. I'll have Sue demonstrate for us, and the first place that we'll want to start is our foot positioning, and we will want our feet to be hip width distance apart. Now, as we go into the remainder of the bracing and foundation, I'll have Sue rotate so that we can really showcase what we want to have. Move our way up to bracing the pelvis and bracing through our glutes. So I want you to think about as you're bracing those glutes as if you're at the top of a hip thrust. We wanna have a lot of tension and stability created through those glutes. Now from there, we're going to move on to the core and we want to have our belly filled with air as if someone was breaking down about to punch you right in the stomach, just like that, as if I was right here and that's what you want. Now that her core is braced, we're going to ensure that her spine stays neutral and then she's going to slightly tuck her chin to make sure that the spine stays in a neutral position. Now that we've set our foundation, let's go ahead and pick up the trap bar to get ourselves into the eccentric portion of the exercise. we're going to initiate by driving our hips back. We're going to think as if someone is pushing a tabletop right through that midline of our pelvis and find that end range for the eccentric portion of the exercise. Now, there are miscues that you can have when performing the eccentric portion. You can drive your hips back while losing the bracing and going into anterior pelvic tilt, which is going to put way too much stress on your lower back, as well as not target the glutes and hamstrings as well. There's also another option where you do not even hinge at the hips and you just drop forward with your upper body. And this really limits the range of motion as well as puts far too much stress on your back. As we're working through the eccentric portion of this exercise, we want to be very cognizant of our active range of motion. I'll have Sue demonstrate. As she pushes her hips back, she's going to maintain a neutral spine. And she's going to stop as soon as her hips stop pushing back. If she continues to lower the trap bar, she's going to be putting more strain on her lower back and taking away tension from the glutes and hamstrings in this exercise. If you're wanting to get the most bang for your buck and really grow your glutes through this exercise, you're going to do an excellent job of maintaining tension through the glutes at the lengthened position. And that lengthened position is going to be at the end of the eccentric as you've pushed the hips back and you found that bottom range, you want to feel powerful and under control in this position if you're really wanting to maximize overall growth because from a research perspective, we understand that this is what's really going to elicit what you're wanting to see. Now that we've established how to go about the eccentric and find that end range for your active range of motion, let's dig into how we approach the concentric portion of this exercise. So Sue is going to push her hips back. She's going to find that end range for her. Now, as she is stable in this position, what she's going to do to initiate is contract her glutes together to initiate her hips driving forward, maintaining a neutral spine and maintaining that braced core that we started with. What she is not going to do is that as she pushes her hips back and finds that end range, she's not going to yank the bar up with her arms, but simply is going to use her hands as hooks and allow for her hips to be the driving force through the concentric portion. Think of the RDL as much more of a horizontal movement rather than a vertical movement. Remember the core bracing that I talked about in the foundation of this exercise. It is going to apply through the entire exercise as a whole because a common miscue that individuals have is that as they go through the eccentric, they have great bracing, but as they go through the concentric, they lose that bracing and then this puts their hips too far behind and puts greater strain on their lower back. If you're performing this movement and feel like the only reason that you're failing is because your grip strength, then I highly recommend you grab a pair of Versa grips or wrist straps as I can promise you, as you continue to perform this movement, your glutes, your hamstrings, your back are always going to be stronger than your forearms. And by utilizing the Versa grips or wrist straps, it eliminates your forearms being a limiting factor. The second thing is that if you're struggling with the 
concentric portion and initiating with your hips, we have a video right here to walk you through how to better perform that with a band in place. By having the band around your hips, it allows for you to reinforce the initiation through the hips in that concentric portion. Now, wasn't that the best RDL execution video you've ever seen? If you're still needing a second pair of eyes on your exercise execution, then we've got you. Go ahead and head to the link below to apply for our one-on-one -on -one coaching, and we would love to be able to help you to get the best results possible. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and share this with a friend that would love some glutes too. We'll catch you in the next one.